Hello, today we're going to be covering the Bic lighter. It's a simple, convenient, and easy to use method for starting fires. Different from its counterparts, such as a magnesium bar, matches, a ferrous seam rod, or even flint and steel. It is all self-contained. The only thing you need to start a fire is a working Bic lighter and a working hand. To use the big lighter, the wheel on the top, you are going to spin, which sparks the flint, and you are going to depress the red button, which releases the butane. When done quickly, the spark will ignite the gas, which then will ignite anything you're igniting. Ferrocium, sorry, ferrocium rods, magnesium blocks, hand drills, flint steel, matches, all have their place. However, why do you need this when you can flick a bic? Now, you should know how to use magnesium bar, matches, hand drills. You should have a broad knowledge of fire making for personal survival, bugging out, or every day outdoor needs. Starting fire is essential for when you're in the bush. You can use it for cooking, boiling water, for security, light, heat, the list goes on and on. You can do it quite quickly with your Bic. Now, Bics do have their drawbacks though. The Bic is not very windproof at all actually. Simple gust of wind, and it's out. No, not to worry though, simply spark it again, and it'll work. Any of you smokers out there know how to use your hand to use it as a shield. You do not have that problem with a fair seam rod or magnesium block. The reason why is because you have to spark, and then that spark is igniting your flame or your tinder, um, more exactly, actually. Now, to make it, another drawback is that it is not waterproof. If you want to make it waterproof, simply put it in a waterproof bag and keep it in your pocket. They don't work too well in the cold. Well, the butane does. However, your spark, the wheel, will work fine. If you want to keep it warm, Simply keep it in a plastic bag so it is also waterproof and keep it close to your body. You can do this quite simply by either putting it in your waistband or in a pocket close to your body. That is going to keep the butane warm, keeping it flowing and allowing you to keep sparking. Now, you should always carry more than one bag. Why? Well, if you lose one, you always have a backup. A way to retain your Bic is by using this. It's called a lighter leash. I haven't seen them. I've bought this from a convenience store. It's very simple. All you do, simply take it off. It's held on by suction. There's a small, it is molded to fit around the bottom of your Bic. And it goes up about half, half to three quarters of an inch up onto your Bic. Now, in the bottom, it is hollow, so you can store small items such as a cotton ball, perhaps a fishing line, a weight and a hook, or whatever else you deem necessary for your kit. I like to use a cotton ball because it's a very simple and effective way to start a fire. Simply take the cotton ball, rip it apart, take your Bic or other ignition source, and you have a fire. If you want that cotton ball to last a bit longer, all you're gonna do is take it rip it into pieces like I've done, and you're going to soak it in Vaseline 
or petroleum jelly. If you want it to be medicated, you can also use a triple antibiotic ointment. Sold at most convenience stores, probably, or a grocery store. Walmart also keeps it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take cotton ball, cotton strip, cotton pad, doesn't matter. You're going to take it and simply rip it into pieces. Once it's been ripped, you're going to take a plastic bag. You're going to drop the cotton ball into the plastic bag. Take your Vaseline, mush it around, and it'll come out looking like that. This Vaseline soaked cotton ball will burn a lot hotter and also for a lot longer. Not too sure how much longer. However, I could probably get a rough estimate or I could actually show you. Now, that is about what you're going to be burning. Now, you don't need this whole cotton pad to start your fire. Simply take a small piece. and light it. And you're gonna be good. Gets a little hot. <laughs> now, the reason why I keep regular cotton balls and Vaseline soaked cotton balls is because I may not need Vaseline soaked cotton ball for a certain task. Say if I'm cleaning the lens on a camera, I'm not going to want to gunk it up with the Vaseline. However, if I do have a cut or a wound, a scrape, uh, abrasion, burn, whatever it is, I'm going to use Vaseline silk cotton ball to soothe that area. If it's triple antibiotic ointment, you can use that as well by putting it on the wound and then applying a dressing over top of the cotton ball. Now, you're going to want to keep your Vaseline cotton balls separate from your regular cotton balls, cotton pads, whatever, but in the same place. So I put mine in a bag and then just in another bag. It keeps them separate, but safe. Now, the bag is waterproof. However, if I were to go on an expedition, what I might do is actually put this along with one lighter in a waterproof container, a hard case. That hard case is going to allow you, this is a simple hard case right here, and I have some, uh, actually I think this is empty, but it's, it's hard case, it's not going to be crushed under you know, normal weight. Say if you set your bag down on something he on something hard, or you fall landing on your bag, this isn't going to mind. I picked this up at Walmart. It is called a Plano. I think that's how you say it. P L A N O, and it was about I think five dollars. However, I'm going to keep that in a hard case. It'll keep it. It'll keep my tinder and also my ignition source. It may be ferrocium rod, magnesium block, matches, whatever it is, it's going to keep it very safe and secure in that hard case. It's also gonna be waterproof, durable, and with some resilience to the cold. Is it gonna be furnace? No, but it will allow you to simply take it out and spark. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.